All right, I am going to explain um, the AirTrack Lab to you. We've got this set up here. Um, this is our blower, and so it's coming through once we turn it on to the track, and you'll notice that the track has all little holes in it. So it's kind of like an air hockey table, uh, except that it is a track. Uh, and so as we turn this on, then you'll notice that, first of all, the poster is moving. Uh, and second of all, this cart is very free to slide along. What we've got set up is photo gates, again, and I used the photo gates last week for most of your labs. I'm just going to turn that off while I talk. Um, so we've got the photo gates set up. And so what happens is once this cart is free to slide along, we are minimizing the friction, essentially. And the shape of the carts also helps to minimize the friction. And so what's going to happen is this cart is going to slide through. And I don't know whether you can see that this light is on. Uh, and so it's going to block the first photo gate. And then as it continues to slide, it's going to block this second photo gate. And so it's going to come in and it's going to collide. Now we've got a variety of carts. We've got smaller ones and bigger ones. Those are the two options. And I've tried to pick some that are about the same weight. Uh, so this one is 147 grams. This one is 147.1 grams. And so what's going to happen when we run the lab is we're going to pick a couple of different carts and we're going to collide them. Now we can move the photo gates along to try to maximize um, the calculations, basically. We're going to come in, have them collide and bounce back through the photo gates. So this cart is going to come through. We're going to assign that a positive velocity. Because these are about the same weight, they bounce off of each other. And so this one is going to come back through the photo gate. And it's going to now have a negative velocity. This one is coming through, and so we're going to give it a negative velocity. Once it bounces off and comes back, we're going to give it a positive velocity. And you'll see the numbers in the chart that's provided. You'll see the masses and you'll see the speeds uh, with positives and negatives already assigned to them. Now, different things could happen. For example, if we had a larger cart and we hit a smaller cart, what we are going to do maybe is have this one be still and send it through. And you'll notice that the red one kept moving forward because of its mass. And so in that case, they're all going to end up with positive velocities at the end. The yellow one is going to start with a zero velocity, uh, and then they're all going to have positive velocities at the end. And so what we're going to do is run seven different trials with bigger carts and smaller carts. We can have bigger ones trying to hit smaller ones smaller ones hitting the bigger ones, a couple coming in and colliding, uh, and we're just using the photo gates to calculate the speeds for us. All right, I just want to show you the program that we're using, which is called Logger Pro. And this Logger Pro program is designed to attach to all of the different sensors that we have. Uh, later on in the light unit, we might use a light sensor as well, and that connects to the same program. It's connected through something that's called the lab quest and to the photo gates. And I just want to show you uh, what the program looks like and what I'm looking for in the program. So you'll notice here that it says gate state unlocked. And if I put my finger in uh, between the beam, you'll see that it says gate state blocked. And so that's what we're using. And uh, we have two photo gates side by side. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the program calculate a column and I'm going to call it time for cart and time two. And what I'm going to make the program do for me is measure the blocked to blocked time. And so I'm looking at the gate state. Uh, so the state is either blocked or unblocked. And I want blocked to blocked. 
And so that's the first calculated column that I'm uh, having the program make for us. And then I'm going to have another calculated column. And this time I want it to calculate the speed of the cart for me. And that's in meters per second. The reason I'm calling it speed and not velocity is because this thing, uh, the program has no idea whether the cart is going forward or backwards. It only knows that the cart is going. Uh, and so it's only going to give us speed numbers. Now what I've done is measured the distance between the two photo gates and it's 1.8 centimeters. So I'm going to put in 0 0.018. So that's my distance divided by my time. So I'm having it take the time that I've calculated and put it into this formula. And so that is going to give us a speed. So if we turn the air track on and I hit collect and you send one part through the photo gates, then you'll see that at this moment, the cart was moving 0.188 meters per second. If I send it much faster, well, that was not much faster, but that was faster, uh, 0.199 meters per second. And so you'll see that it's measuring the time between and the speed. Now we have this other number in between, uh, and we're not using this number. The reason that we're not using this number is because it's measuring blocked to blocked. And so this is between the first one and the second one. But then while the card is going and colliding and coming back and doing uh, whatever it's doing, this time is between uh, when the second photo gate was blocked until it comes back and blocks it again. And so we're looking for every other number in this chart. All right, so we're going to run one trial just to show you what's happening. And normally you would be in a group of three, hopefully, uh, but what's gonna happen is uh, Mr. Oliver, who's agreed to help, is going to hit collect on the one computer. I'm gonna hit collect on the other computer. So each set of photo gates is connected to one of the computers. Then Mr. Oliver is going to hold this cart so that it stays pretty still until the collision. And I'm going to send the second cart through and hit it. So we just want V1 to be zero for that one as much as possible. And you can see that when they actually collided, this one almost stopped. And then what we're going to do is just record the data out of the charts for you.